Okay, I guess if you're watching this, you've probably been looking at, um, at other videos on, on YouTube there. Um, and there's a lot, of, a lot of things out there, a lot of videos out there with making white wine into sparkling wine or Prosecco or Champagne uh, with um, soda streams. Completely forget it, absolute garbage. Uh, the pressure that a soda stream will put into your white wine is, is minimal, maybe, I don't know, 15 psi, something like that. If you want to be approaching um, something something decent, something drinkable, um, then you really want a, a slightly higher pressure sort of setup. I mean, if you consider um, that champagne or prosecco in one of those thick wine bottles is going to be around about eighty-five to ninety psi, something like that. Um, and I say your soda stream is going to be kicking out at about fifteen psi. Coupled with that, the fact that you do lose quite a bit of wine at the top of the soda stream. Um, and you do lose quite a bit of gas. It isn't a, a cheap way of, of, of gassing wine up. If you do do a lot of wine, um, or you want to do a lot of wine, then you really want to be using this sort of setup. Um, I make quite a bit of home brew, um, so I pressurise my wine like this. Been doing it for a few weeks, and uh, it's banged on. Um, so I'm just going to break down the kit that you need um, and the the method of, of, of gassing your wine. I'm, Give you a quick demonstration of that. Okay, so first up, you need a gas bottle. Um, these are uh, a rental. Um, initially, you pay about twenty-eight pounds. Uh, I suppose that's about what thirty-five dollars, something like that, um, to get the bottle. So it's about twenty-eight pounds, and then you pay a monthly, um, a monthly rental on there. That's about three pounds sixty, something like that. So not fortunes, but it will add up if you're not using using it you know regularly so you need to be using it regularly to, to get your money's worth out of it um, so I it's about 28 pounds initially for the bottle you need a CO2 regulator um, and when you're shopping for one of these make sure the um, the gauge reading the lower pressure is in pounds per square inch or bar um, this is a, a, a welding CO2 regulator you do get some of those that are um, supplied with litres per minute or, or what have you, you don't want one of those, you want pounds per square inch or you want bar, because you need to be able to set this around about 40 psi, nothing higher than that and that is that is limited by the, the fittings that you will see on top of the, the bottles um, so we're going to be around about 38, 40 psi on this and no more um, okay so you've got your regulator, that was about 25 pounds um, there's a little fitting on the end there, just um, I'll put the, the details up in the in the top corner there. Um, that was about four pounds. You get the the hose, the fitting, and one of these carbonating caps. You get that as a um, as a kit, if you will. I got these from eBay. They're about thirteen pounds. Um, basically, screwing the adapter in there, clamp the the holes on there, and you're good to go. Okay. So as it is at the moment, there's pressure, the pressure in the system just taps open. Okay, uh, this is one I did earlier. This is uh, under pressure. This is pressurised. This is carbonated. Um, I'll just leave that on one side. That is settled, and I'll, and I'll show you what what I mean by that in a minute. This is um, one bottle, one 750 milliliter bottle of of home brew wine, completely flat. There's no bubbles in that at all. And the method of carbonating that, you put one of these caps onto the top of the bottle, just just part way on, just part way on to start with. There we go, and then you can squeeze the air out. Okay, so you want to squeeze all that air out, and then you can tighten the bottle, tighten the the cap on, so you're at that stage. Okay, so all the air is out of that bottle, maybe a couple of little bubbles in there, but that's nothing to worry about. So you got to that stage, I said there's pressure, pressure in this set to just under 40 psi. Pull back this little clip on there, put that onto the bottle, and you'll see this quickly expand. Okay, that little squeaking noise is basically the CO2 coming through, um, through the system. So this is under pressure at the minute and this will take some time for the CO2 to basically be absorbed into the liquid. Now you can either leave this on the side for half an hour, 25 minutes, something like that, or you can speed the process up um, by shaking the, the bottle 
um, maybe about 20 seconds, 25 seconds, something like that, and you'll hear the CO2 going through the system, squeaking as, it, as it's doing it, um, and then when that stops, you know, you're round about saturation point. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that. So we'll just hold those together. And you hear it start to, to slow down now. Okay, so we're pretty much done there. You can take that, take that off now. What I like to do is you do get a little bit of wine just coming out the top. Just give that a quick swill in there, and that'll take five ten minutes to settle, something like that. So rather than those guys waiting here for for that to settle, uh, I'll just put that to one side. What I should point out is you should do this with the, the wine as cold as possible. So get it in the fridge, get that really cold down, uh, cool down. The CO2 will absorb better into the liquid when it's colder. Okay, so just to give you a quick demonstration, that will, that will settle in five minutes. This one's already been done. Okay. Perfect. So I hope that was useful for you. Like I say, complete. I'd forget about the soda stream uh, route and go down this route. This is much better. And don't forget to turn the tap off when you've finished. Okay. Thanks very much.